Welcome, it's the Rump Here Sports Print Factory Show here on a Wednesday. I got Big T with me in the building. Finally, he's back. He's had a busy day today. He's been running around playing dad, doctor's appointments, basketball practice, yelling at his kid for turning the ball over. He's just been everywhere. I mean, it's just a crazy day for Big T. But now we get the sports part of the day for Big T. So it's got to get a little better, right, Big T? It's a good part of it. It's the day. I, it's the time of day I've been looking forward to. I knew I knew starting out even last night that it was going to be a crazy day for me. But once we get to three o'clock, Print Factory, and then into NBA, it's going to be much easier now that I'm back to the palatial estate here. Bro, that was like the last like three days. It felt like for me, where I was just like running around doing crap, like. Family. You're like me too. Like we we don't mind like doing stuff, but we'd much rather just be. I, I kind of like when we're through all the holidays and it's just back to normal, where we're in our routine. I'm going to my lunch. I'm relaxing, watching the games. I'm <laughs> the holidays get crazy. I mean, the next couple of weeks we got a lot of stuff going, a lot of slates too, a lot of work yeah. stuff to do. There's just a lot of stuff around the holidays. It's just it's a busy time. Yeah. Uh, for, oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's one of the reasons why holidays are just tough for me in general, because you just aren't in your normal, normal groove. You know what I mean? You got family flying in, all that stuff. So, but I, I'm glad I, I got a bunch of it over with four hour graduation for my wife yesterday. So I just I was, and I love the love Cal. Great lady. I hate graduation. It could be my wife, your wife, my sister, my mom. Those graduations are absolutely brutal. Yeah, it was crazy, too, because they did, like, the full graduation. And it wasn't just her program. There was, like, the nursing program and the – There's got to uh, be a better way to do it. There, there's just cra – it's crazy. So they did, they like, really the need to call thing. every person? Yeah, they do. And then they did the like, full thing. And, you know, everyone needs their own, like, picture with the oh. diploma, like, all that stuff. And then after they did the full thing, Tony – they split off into different rooms with their own program and they did for them. It was the white coat ceremony. You know what I mean? So they got more awards, you know, like all, all the crazy awards that they do more, you know, speeches and, and, and then they got the teachers were putting the white coats on them and they did it like eight or at a time. So it was like another hour, hour crazy. process there. So it, it was no a long thing, but like it could be my graduation. And I don't like it. Like no one likes that. No, I, I don't even think the kids had to like love it that much. They like, can't. like they, I mean, you sure you like it when you're up on the stage, you get it, you push the thing, you, well, you take the picture. I mean, all, but it is what it is. Like it's yeah. four hours. Like, I mean, brutal. It's an accomplishment though. So you got to say, it. and I'm proud of my wife. She did an awesome job. Yeah, That yeah. part. Absolutely. And she went through an accelerated program too. So that stuff's like not easy. There's no way I could have went through even the program, let alone an yeah. accelerated version That's not of, built for us. of the program. No, it's not built for me. So, yeah. all right, let's get to the sports, which is what the people want to hear. By the way, Tony, before we get to the sports, I figured out the chair. I figured out the chair. Who sent it to me? I figured it all out. Was it your wife? It wasn't my wife. You want one more guess? Your dad? It was my dad. Yeah, yeah. it was my dad who sent it my to me. So, so it was a, supposedly it was a Christmas gift that he sent to my house. And he didn't think it was going to come this early. And, and he thought it was going to come like really close to Christmas. And it literally came like how long ago? Like almost a week ago now. And so I said to my dad, I go, dad, this chair's been sitting in my garage for like a week now. I said, do you know, did, did you get, and he's like, it already came. What? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Cause yeah, Andy watches the these shows and he sees that damn chair and he's like, get, that's my son. I can't have my son with a chair like this. Get it, that it damn was, thing out of there. Andy's a good man. I see you, Andy. It was funny too. Cause it's really hard to get me gifts. Cause I'm, uh, you're probably the same way as me, but I don't like tell people what I want. I don't want people to get me gifts. Like I, I, yeah. I, I don't want. And I don't want anything. I don't want anything exactly. So my father knows that. So it's really hard for them to like find gifts. So he said it to my brother a few weeks ago. He's like, I got the perfect gift for John. I like found the perfect gift. So it must have been one of the shows when you yeah. guys were roasting me for my chair, mm -hmm. and, and he was listening because he does listen from time to time. And, you know, he was like, oh, I'm going to get John a new chair. Look at that thing. It's all 
you know, ripped up and shit. So yeah, yeah. shout out my dad. I found the, the chair culprit though, Wiley. Wiley was really wondering too. He was wondering who uh, the, the chair sender was. So I was mean, there's not that many people that it could be. <laughs> it had to, there's not that many that have your address and like, no, you need other well, It was just be weird because no one was like, hey, I got you this gift. It's yeah. coming, you know, in the mail. You know what I'm saying? Like, ch- ch- wait for it. So. All right, but that's it. I will use the chair though. So 100%, Corey, I, I do need a new chair. This this thing though, I think I'm going to sit it right next to just so you guys can always view yep. the old one. But, Reminisce. Yeah, you got you got to got to nostalgia, whatever that's called. All right, let's get the football talk going, Tony. And uh, it's funny we were talking before the show real quick about the 49ers, our 49ers, and you were saying how you don't really love the spot and we were going back and forth on it a little bit against the Ravens. This game isn't on the main slate. It's the only reason I bring it up is because it's a Monday night game. It's not on the main slate. So do you want to give like your initial thoughts on just like that game from like a betting perspective? Cause I'm, I'm on the 49ers, but it seems like you are more hesitant. Yeah. I just know Shanahan's the sharpest dude in the NFL he knows he's probably got this one seed locked up. I mean, unless they lose two times, which they're not going to lose two times if they don't want to. And he knows the Ravens, which I don't agree with, but the Ravens are in the one seed. There's a decent chance they end up seeing them down the line in a game that means a lot more. Shanahan's just a chess, not checkers guy. He's not going to show everything in a game like this. I'm not saying, again, this is not like the Holden argument where I'm like, they're going to just run it up the middle every play. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they're not going to show any special play. They're just not going to go out of their way to show everything in this game. They're going to keep, like on defense, they're not going to show some of the special coverages. They're not, Like the stuff for Lamar, they're, they're going to have special stuff for him if they meet in the playoffs. They're gonna they're gonna run just basic stuff against him, not show him anything, hold back stuff. I'm not saying I don't like the 49ers. I'm not betting the Ravens. I'm not saying that. I just am not in love with the Niners as much as I normally would be in this spot. Like if this was a Super Bowl somehow, I would be all in the Niners at five and a half. I would be loading up the truck to bet them, but I just don't love the spot. The Ravens need to win. The Niners technically need to win because they're the one seed, but they do have a game to spare. They, they they can lose a game somewhere in here. So do do they need to win though, the Ravens? Like, do they absolutely need this game? Like, is it I mean I don't, I don't think, think they, they do. Like, what, they're probably up one game too, right? They're up one game on the Dolphins and the you know they played the already Dolphins, too, right? The Dolphins have Dallas too this week, so they don't have a cupcake matchup. And it's Dallas coming off that ass whooping. So Baltimore plays got. Miami next week. Yeah, and then Baltimore plays Miami. So but they, I'm just saying Baltimore like, definitely needs to win then because I mean if they lose, they're tied with Miami. So it's a yeah. either way, I guess, because if Miami wins, they'd have the tiebreaker even if they're tied. So but if yeah, they lose, I mean, they're they're tied already. So Right. I don't know. Baltimore exactly. needs to win. I mean, yeah, exactly. Unless Miami drops this game against Dallas, which is very easy. Yeah, easily. <laughs> so I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, I mean, do they need to win? I guess they need to win more than the 49ers. Is your point, anyways? Like, this game means more to them than the 49ers. But I mean, if, if the 49ers drop, I know they have the tiebreakers, but there's still four teams at ten and four, and if all four or three teams at 10 and four and all if all three of those teams win then in the 49ers lose they're tied so they just got all they got the they got the tiebreaker everywhere though like they i know i understand that conference i understand that what i'm saying to you though is like it's still not like a a meaningless game for them like no yeah i don't want it to sound like that because if they win this it's almost a wrap Not yeah, saying if that they, at all. I'm just saying, I'm saying like, like if they win this, it's almost a wrap, Tony. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like all they got to do is win. I mean, two out of three of their last games is a total wrap. Right. So who do exactly. they even play the next three? So they play. I mean, their next two weeks, they play Washington next week. So that's a win. And in, in the Rams. In the Rams. Which could, which if they win the next two weeks, they won't even care versus the Rams. But But yeah. that would be a massive game, probably for the Rams. Massive game. The the Rams definitely want San Francisco to win the next two weeks. That will be very good for the Rams. 
because right now the Rams are seven and seven, and there's three other teams besides them. No, f- well, if you count the Bucks, there's f- <laughs> there's five, seven, and seven teams right now in the NFC, and they all suck. And they all suck. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of six and eight teams that are not technically out of the playoffs yet. So yeah. they, that that race is why, uh, you know, Minnesota, the Rams, Seattle, New Orleans. Like, I'm going to be so tilted when, because we were on Seattle versus Philly. I'm going to be so tilted when we lose that bet because of Seattle beating Philly and uh, they make the playoffs because of that win. <laughs> it's going to piss me off. But speaking of Seattle, I didn't know if you got to talk about it yesterday, so I didn't know if you you already I definitely got to, didn't talk much about it. You didn't get to talk up much about it, but if you didn't watch the Monday show, you know we were on an island. We told everyone Seahawks. Everyone was on the Eagles. It's even more Fine. than that, though. Like on that show last week, we were like, "They're done. We're Not burying last them." Week. And this is when on, they're one on of the best teams in the NFC. Other shows don't do this. We buried them. They're though. done. They're done. They're no more in contention. And yeah. I got so many messages on Twitter. You're an idiot. You don't watch football. You don't do this. You don't. Well, no, actually, it's the opposite of that. I watch a bunch. I know what's going on. And I know this team sucks. They suck. And, Check and no, I was they in, suck. And I was in Discord through that whole game, Tony, right? And, and you watched the game. They were losing for a lot of that game, right? Seahawks were down. And it wasn't so was because Philly was playing good, but yes. It was not. Yeah. But I was going to see, you know, like Seattle's cheeks, Seattle sucks, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then, it, and then it turns from Seattle sucks to JSU doesn't know what he's talking about or it's a bit or, you know, like it's not a bit. football. And it one, it's not a bit. Yeah. I, like I said, the thing about Jalen Hurts not being good this year, like honestly, like it, when you watch him throw the football, he has not been good this year. I, I said it. And and then I go back in that game, Tony, I could pick out so many throws where Jalen Jalen Hurts was horrendous throwing the football. There was one pass where Devontae Smith was just running across the field wide open, just running right by his face. And A.J. Brown was running almost like a go all the way down the field, and he threw it in between them. Like, it wasn't even close to A.J. Brown, wasn't even close to him, and it wasn't close to Devontae Smith, who was wide open. I'm like, I think he was throwing that to A.J. Brown, but, like, Devontae Smith was wide open and would have picked up the third down, and I'm just saying to myself, like, how how are we saying this guy is, like, the MVP or, like, should be the MVP or one of the top quarterbacks right now? He's not playing like it, so don't put him in it. Yes, is he athletic? Unbelievably, yes. Is he strong? Is he physical? Can he run up the middle and get you a first down on fourth and one? A hundred percent. But like, he has not been playing that good at quarterback. And stop telling me he is because of what he did last year. Because that's what people are doing, Tony. They're taking. I'm a, still not. A year this ago. is where I'll really make people mad. But I, I mean, you can go back and you actually look at, deeper at last year. They had the easiest. We talked all of last year how easy their schedule was. Easy. In the playoffs, they kept facing teams without a quarterback. If you really, like, break it down, it could have just been an illusion. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. Or, or the other thing is, Tony, and I think it's a little of this, too. I think Jalen Hurts' knee has been more yeah, hurt. He's definitely than banged up. That's everybody, Cause, though. Because he's yeah. looked a step slower to me, even when he runs, like, yeah. like when he runs out of the pocket all year. And I've been saying this since literally week two of the season. I'm like, is he running with, like, a little bit of, like, a gip? Like, like yeah. what's going on? Like, it literally looks like he can't get, like, his full burst of running like it did yeah. last year. So maybe it's a little bit of both, you know what I mean? So the knee could be more of an issue too, but either way, well, I got killed for thing, it in though, Discord. This is where the schedule gets interesting though. So Philly, the next three weeks gets to play the Giants twice and Arizona. Oof. So in That's a hurry, good. they're going to look good again to get us to where when they get in the playoffs, we're going to have fade opportunities again because – they're going to look really good the next three weeks. I promise you. They're, they're going to look really good against the Giants in Arizona. So people are going to be right back on the wagon like, oh, they figured it out. They got it rolling again. Well, no, because what's their weakness on defense? Receivers. The Giants, even though we talk about Hyatt and these guys, they don't have good receivers. Let's be honest. They don't have good receivers. Arizona, worst receivers in football by the numbers. So they're not facing teams that match up with them the next two, three weeks. I mean, they're going to pound these teams. I'm going to bet Philly the next three weeks. They're going to roll. They can't beat teams huh. with receivers. 
yeah, they're going to absolutely destroy these t- these teams, which is good. Uh, hopefully Perfect they do it. Us. Hopefully they do win like 40 to 10 on like all these yeah. games. And like, I think they will, good. honestly. I think they're going to pound them. The only thing that I worry about, Tony, is they run the crap out of the football and it just drains the clock. Yeah. Like, I just think they're just... going to try to like, they know they're struggling. I just really feel like they're going to open it up and try to get things rolling. I hope kind of so. like I, Dallas I really did, did that one year, like two, maybe two years ago, maybe where they, they had nothing to even play for the last two weeks. And they just kept chucking the ball all around just to like get the mojo. They go into the playoffs, get their ass kicked. Like it, I, yeah. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. But see, this is the best part is you get the Twitter DMs. I was in Discord the whole time. I was getting destroyed by our own members. Yeah. Our own members were destroying me, saying it's a bit, saying did that I don't know. they go quiet after the L? They went quiet after the L. They did. Well, I, I got some apologies after that from some of them, not from all of them, but from some of them. You can't um, lose the freaking Seattle if you're, uh, yeah. I mean, Seattle didn't even play good. And it was Drew Locke. Drew Locke and sucked. It, and and then they'll then they'll revert to my point of well you said Jalen Hurts sucks and I'm like he well, did suck <laughs> he sucked he sucked in that game and he's sucked this season when you watch him throw the football he has not been good I don't care what you say like I've watched it all right I've watched it's Lamar just be people bad. don't know how to watch football though they see the I, fantasy numbers he puts up he had two one yard touchdowns again of course he's gonna have good you fantasy don't have to numbers. tell Lamar has been amazing fantasy for years Tony and for years I've gotten killed because I say Lamar can't throw the ball outside he can't like that's why he throws the ball at tight uh, end so much you're gonna get uh Snyder very upset Mitch I know. Snyder was already mad at me he was trying to like slide into my dms asking for a friendly bet and I was like, no, I already put 2K on the 49ers. I don't need any more. But he's trying to slide in, Tony. So if you want to slide in the Snyder's DMs, you can. He's he's open. Oh, I've already slid in. He can have as much as he wants. He wanted friendly. I don't really do friendly bets that much. I, I, he wanted I a put, friend, friends, frenzies? Frenzies. Free, what, was it called? what did he call it? Uh, Freebies? What, what? God, what's the word? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I I don't know. But either way, it was just funny that like, you know, the the like the members and then they'll try and like change your take a little, Tony. You know what I mean? Like you said that well, like we're not talking about that. We're talking about, yeah. you know, this game, watching this game and telling me that this wasn't his fault. Don't give me the Oh, he grabbed them on the interception. He that was his the shirt worst take of all, anyway. Uh, like, it wasn't even interfering. Don't give me that. Yeah, don't <laughs> give me that. Because, Tony, I, I said it to him. I go, if you throw it over his shoulder, right, if you put it to where it's either too far or he's the only one who can catch it, that's where you're supposed to put that ball. Yeah. So even if they did tug him a little bit, they, they, they wouldn't yeah, get it's just hit. excuse making. Yeah. And then at the end, all they needed was a field goal, and they, they do it again. Like, and it's just bad football. Pick. And he throws a pick again. Like, yeah. what? why did he throw it 30 yards down the field, by the way, Tony? Yeah. It's always what Rodgers did. It's why Rodgers has one Super Bowl. Because it, it always oh, when he needed 10 yards, he'd throw it 40. Like, you don't need 40. You need 10. That was why Tom Brady was so great. Tom Brady was the – he used – and I wasn't a Brady guy. So, he used to piss me off because he'd always throw it – if he needs six, he throws it seven. If he needs always. four, he throws it five. Always. No, he was like the smartest – like yeah. like when it came to that shit, he never threw like go routes. Never. On, like fourth. The only and, time and ever he did was when he had the best receiver of all time, Randy Moss. Well, that <laughs> was like that was the only time. Yeah, he was that. That was the best go route receiver you'll ever yeah, see in your life, see Randy Moss. Like, that dude ran like three routes. Like that was uh, two routes. That he was have ran one route. Just. Yeah, he was amazing, but all right, let's get to these games, and we don't have to talk that much. But it was just funny. I. I I don't mind the shit talk back and forth, but it was just funny how much you, you get mad. People get mad at you when you're talking about their favorite teams or favorite players and they oh. don't see it. They're too emotional that they can't, they can't see it some, sometimes Tony. And just, I think that's one thing we're we good have at. Like based on stuff, like sometimes it's coin flippy. Like you could pick this team yeah. or that Philadelphia is a take that I am dead locked in on. I will be, Stunned if they prove me wrong. Like, man, I'm telling you right now, if you gave – I made this argument in chat, but if you flipped Patrick Mahomes receivers, that includes Travis Kelsey, oh. if you flipped them and yeah. gave Philadelphia's skill weapons to Patrick Mahomes, yeah. how fucking good would the Chiefs be, Tony? 
How yeah. good would they be? And the, Seriously. And, the, and, and uh, Hertz would never win a game with the, the people that KC has. I'm just telling you. And then they're like, well, you think – so Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen are the two best quarterbacks? Right now they are. They're the two best quarterbacks in the league. If you said which – I would take one of those quarterbacks if I was drafting one of the best quarterbacks in the league, just skill-wise. Like, mm-hmm. skill. I'm not talking about who they have. It'd be one of them. But who would you take, Tony? Dak, I mean, I would Josh Allen? Mahomes for sure. Mahomes? Yeah, there you go. I mean, right. if I had to t- play a fantasy guy, though, I would play Josh Allen. That's 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 different, though. That's yeah. not the question I asked. I like Josh you know Allen I mean? as a quarterback, too, but I would take Mahomes first. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he's the better quarterback. Josh Allen's a better fantasy guy, though, for sure. All yeah, right, let's get in this nine-game slate. Um, obviously, guys, there's so many slates. You obviously got tomorrow's Thursday night game. We'll have a showdown show, 3 p.m. Eastern, this YouTube channel, me, Big T, and the Prez. We'll be breaking that showdown or showdown show uh, game down, New Orleans in L.A. So that'll be tomorrow. Then Saturday, me and Tony and hopefully the Prez. I haven't, I haven't talked to him yet, but maybe the Prez. We'll be doing a little Saturday uh, morning wood at 10 a.m. for the two-gamer. That's Saturday at 4 and 8, I think, are the two uh, games uh, time slot-wise. And then we'll have our normal programming for Sunday uh, football. We'll have the normal stuff, you know, 8.45, 9 o'clock off the chalk, then the 10 o'clock morning wood, and then the countdown going up for the members. And then Monday, me and somebody else, not any of the guys with kids or anything like that because they obviously have stuff to do. It's Christmas um, so we give, you know, those guys, uh, not off from the, from the content, just off from the, you know, the show. So me and someone else that's single and doesn't have kids to deal with, will be uh, doing a special Christmas day, 9am show. Where we'll break down NFL and NBA. All right. So that's, that's going to be the, the schedule for this week coming up. I know some people will have stuff to do during Christmas. I get it, but anyone who's around will be talking some sports at 9 a.m. So make sure you guys hang out for that. And uh, Tony, uh, I think that's the whole Murray, schedule, right? That was the best ball. Man, I think we're I think we're going to bubble. I think we're going to finish third or fourth, and it sucks. But so. we need a miracle. We need a Bears miracle. We need uh, somebody to really get – like someone to really go off for us. If we the Bears like can somehow DJ, score like 40 or something. We need a DJ Moore explosion game with Justin Fields. Because well. I don't know if we're going to get Trevor Lawrence playing today, uh, this week, Tony. I know. We're, popped, we're in trouble. He popped up with a, a concussion. Uh, I'm worried about him. And he had the – Tony, did you see how they play? They play the friggin' Bucks this week. Yeah. Uh, he's been making me mad. I mean, he, he sucked on us all year. I'm just saying, though, he gets yeah. the nut passing match no, on like, the Bucks. Like, damn it. But, all right, what are you going to do here? All right, Indy and uh, – what do we got? Indy and Atlanta, first game here on the slate. Um, we got a one-point spread and a 44-and-a-half total in this game. And from an injury perspective, there's a lot of injuries, like, uh, in these games, guys. So that's another thing. Like, a lot of guys that aren't practicing on Wednesday – so you got to keep that in mind when we talk about these games. There's a bunch of quarterbacks and concussion protocol and, and other receivers and guys that'll be meaningful if they were to miss that, you know, are, aren't practicing. So you have to wait on those questionable guys. Um, and one of the guys, you know, Michael Pittman, you know, I think he's in the protocol too. So we'll wait and see on him, but they said he's doing good, whatever that means. But Tony, whether he plays or not, it's a one point spread. You got to in Atlanta, against the, a Colts team. I mean, I hate Atlanta games. I like for DFS. I all, like, I hate Atlanta games. I, that's probably the team I faded the most all throughout the year. Cause they just, are, it's a terrible game to watch one. It's always like 13 to 12, like not great for fantasy. So is there anything you see in this game with the Colts and the Falcons? Yeah, I mean, I just freaking hate the both teams. I mean, the Colts, too, just – oh, I mean, they've been a little better lately with some receivers you can play, but now, like, Jonathan Taylor might even play again. I mean, it's just an ugly spot, and the total honestly feels high to me. Like, I don't – I thought it would be in the 30s, like high 30s or something because the way these teams play, but maybe Indy's D just isn't very good, and they – I don't know, though. Like, even by my numbers, my flowchart numbers, I did them last night just so I could be ready for the show today. 
I mean, I trust these things. They've been very good for the most part. And these teams are just mediocre. I mean, I got uh, Indy is like the 18th best pace, so middle of the pack. And then Atlanta's 23. I just, there's just nothing really sticks out. I mean, you look at both sides, you look at the pricing. I mean, even JT 7,200. B. John, I guess, is a little cheap, but they keep giving these other guys so much work. Uh, it's just an ugly game. I, I don't see any reason you need to go to anybody in this game. If so, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Pittman's if, the only one that I, I'm really, I want to see if he plays. Cause if he doesn't play, Tony, maybe you could take shots on a receiver from Indy. Like maybe there's the, you know, the, the price the tags. Is they like priced them up though. Like downs is 5,500. That just feels yep. a little heavy to me. <laughs> Pierce is even 4k. I mean, I, I don't know that DJ Montgomery, 3,300. I just feel yeah. like they're priced up against Atlanta. I, I just don't, I just don't see it. Yeah. They, they looked at him a, a lot though. I felt like in that game more, more than, I've you know, never, he's another so. guy I hadn't heard of until that game. Uh, yeah. I didn't know who he was either. So maybe him at 3,300, but either way, well, uh, you know, I agree with you here. This isn't a game you want to target. Do you, do you like the Colts in this game or are you more on the Falcons? Man, I, I think I'm done with the Colts. <laughs> I don't love Atlanta either, but I, I think I like Atlanta in this spot at home. I, I just, uh, the Colts suck, and P Pittsburgh sucks. Like, all these teams in the middle of the pack, Denver, Pittsburgh, Indy, uh, I mean, Atlanta, throw Atlanta into that too. They're like five. All those teams in the middle of the pack, I just feel like, I don't know, they're all very similar. They're not good. They're not bad. They're just mediocre. Right in the middle. Yeah. Right, right in the middle. You know, that's that's what it is. So, yeah, I, and on top of it, we need to, we we do need Atlanta to win for our Bills. We want to get we want to get the Colts the down. Bills to, are in, man, they're in pretty good shape. They're in good shape. We'll 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 get to them, but they're they're definitely in good I shape. I don't think so. I realized that the Bills were playing the Chargers this week. That that's a good sign. Chargers, for us. Patriots. Yeah, that's good for us. They're not losing those games. Chargers paid. So then it just comes. We still need to people to lose, though. <laughs> we need a couple losses still. How yeah. sick would it be if we won out and didn't get in somehow? <laughs> the good thing is, is that there's a few things that are starting to come back our way, like Jamar Chase not playing for the Bengals. I think is huge this week. And you he's know, out a, the rest of the way too. Is he out the rest of the way? They ruled him out. I thought they he ruled him out for back. this. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, maybe in the playoffs or something if they made it, but he, he's I mean, that's a huge loss. I mean, yeah, they've already lost, like if Cincinnati keeps winning without Chase and Burrow and everything, I'll, I'll just, they could beat Pittsburgh, but uh, I mean, I don't, I don't the, know. Do, do we just give him coach of the year at that point? I, I mean, he's we already, to, right? he'll never win it because they just won't, but it's impressive what he's already done. I, I, I hey, I, I get it. I think, I think he should be considered for sure. I know there's a few other guys. Like I think uh, Ryan's from Houston has done a great job with the rookie Shanahan will never get it, but he's done a great job. Shanahan, like every year Shanahan should be considered to get. Like, and he, they won't give it to him just because he has so much talent. Yeah. He's just, he's, you know what it is, Tony? He's almost like too good where you're like, you guys are too good. We yeah. can't give you that award. You're not we allowed give to win. Yeah, we got to give it to someone else. Even but... though he's the one that put it all together and set up the scheme yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati plays Pittsburgh this week too, Tony. Oh, let's just get to that game. Oh, no, that's it's a, a Saturday, Saturday game. game but we, a Saturday yeah. game. we don't got to go there yet. I think Cincinnati so, uh, can beat Pittsburgh, though, just throwing it out there. I mean. Yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh's terrible. Pittsburgh's Paul bad. Huh? Is just, he's so sharp. He, he's always paying attention. He says you're the best. Love you, butthole Jenkins. Unbelievable. A comment that I see literally every time I do a show with Tony or even when I don't do a show and he's on, but I mean, most of the time we're on together, but either way, but Jenkins, that is the comment that you normally post. So in some way, same way, in some ways, but thank you, but yeah, unbelievable. Can I get a JSU burner to uh, say something nice about me real quick? Just one thing, just so I can like, you know, be on the same level as Tony. But oh, Jenkins is a real one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a, that's not a burner, Tony. Is that what you're saying? Not a burner. Yeah. All right. 
let's go to the next game here. Uh, Green Bay and Carolina here. Green Bay's been you need to you need to have an RIP soul. moment for your Packers ever since you put them up in that four hole. I mean, just absolutely <laughs> destroying my soul. Like this is it's been killing me. It's been killing my best ball teams too. Like everything is just. Just not going my way when it Have they had the, the weirdest Packers. year of anybody, though? Because we buried them early, and then they got early. good, and now they're back to just being awful again. It's like the Jordan Love is the most – he's the <laughs> most roller coaster quarterback of the year. Right, Tony? Just the oh. – like down, 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 and then all of a sudden he just goes up, and then he goes down, like crashing They have down. been so bad the last two weeks. I <laughs> I just don't get it. I I literally am wrong. I, I don't understand it. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I just don't. I don't oh. understand it. But when you lose like that to Baker Mayfield, yeah, you need to you need to just say, you know what? We're not allowed to make the playoffs. Like we shouldn't we shouldn't be allowed to even be considered. But who knows, Tony? Maybe they go on a run. I have no idea. They get Carolina here. It's a five point spread. I think it's in Carolina too, if I remember correctly. So, you know, Carolina's coming off a win. It's a low total. It's a really good spot for a running back, I would say. Like, but do we trust Aaron Jones? He he got, what, like 18 touches. Um, I didn't look at the snap numbers, but he got 18 touches last game. It seemed like he played a decent amount, Tony. What do you think of, like, him as a play if A.J. Dillon's out again? So you you just said the dilemma with this game. You you got a low total. Like Green Bay last week was the perfect receiver spot. And the receivers did do good even though they lost. This week, though, Carolina is one of the weirdest teams in football where, like, by my – because I rank them 1 to 32 based on, like, how stackable they are, like, their games. They're ranked 31st. Even though they're one of the worst teams, they're ranked 31st for, like, stackability just because their D is, like – decent enough and their only real weakness is running back and then you got green bay who doesn't have running backs so i I just feel like it's a really weird spot for green bay i can't play aaron jones i mean the matchup definitely you beat carolina with the running back i just can't I, i can't do it with aaron jones i just i can't and and in this game we have the spread that i've talked about all year on this show where a team is favored by what is it five it's five yeah those tricky numbers where you have a public team on the road versus the worst team in football five everyone's gonna like green bay i just think carolina hangs around and has a chance to win this football game it's not a good matchup for green bay it's not their their strengths do not line up with carolina's strengths you know what's funny though tony is when they were looking good and winning those games. They were running the football really good. This, I, I feel like this would be a spot where you could bounce back and get back to that type of, because that honestly opened up, I think, for Jordan Love. I think that helped Jordan Love. It made things easier when they were running the football efficiently. And, and that's kind of gone away a little bit. And I, I think this is a game where they could bring it back. But I get what you're saying. It's a tricky spread. Um it's a low total too. So like from I don't uh, see Green Bay score, like I, I don't see either team scoring. Like it just feels like an underspot to me for sure. It feels like an underspot. Yeah. So for DFS, I, I think it's like if you pick a guy, it's like one guy. You know what I mean? Honestly, like, I want to look at these snap counts real quick. Uh, you talked about it last week on one of our shows, but Chuba Hubbard could be a sneaky play in this spot uh, against Green Bay where I love Chuba so much. Yeah, I love Chuba. Green Bay is who you so, can kill on the ground. He's been we above talk about Carolina the last two weeks, too. So, yeah, Tony, 22, 22, 23, 25 rushing attempts. That's without even the passing. Like the passing, he gets a couple targets a game, but the rushing attempts, man, you give me 22 to 25 attempts against Green Bay, I'll take that. That's. Yeah. And 5,700 like on top of it. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in 100%. Um, I think it's good. I, You know what? I think both – if A.J. Dillon's out, I could play both running backs. But God, I, I if think I've had bad luck is. with anyone in my life, Aaron Jones is at the top of the list. I have never played that guy when he's crushed. 
Is there a more boomer bust guy in fantasy than Aaron Jones too? Like he's definitely up there because when he, he crushes, he really crushes, and when he sucks, he gives you nothing. There's there's so many island games I can just pop off the top of my head from years past where Aaron Jones would just nuke for like multiple touchdowns, yeah. and I wouldn't have him. Me it would too. just tilt the, I, I just... it would just tilt the ever loving mm-hmm. shit on me that I wouldn't play him. He's that type of guy, but he can also you know get hurt and quit in the first play, and he's done. So. That's the fresh other oh, frustrating part about Aaron Jones. All right, Cleveland, Houston, uh, two and a half point spread. Uh, interesting to hear that uh, they're expecting CJ Stroud to miss this game, Tony. So to miss a second straight game with that concussion, which man, it must have been really bad uh, for him to miss another game here. So I mean, we've seen it before with other guys, but uh, you know. Normally, you see a week. I honestly week think and they a got a little lucky last week to get the win because it gives them the ability to technically rest him. And I, I know they need to win. I'm not saying they don't because they do, but it, it gives them just a slight cushion to make sure he's ready to go for the home stretch. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that definitely makes some sense. So, uh, you know, this is still a big game for him, though. Don't, huge, no huge doubt. Game. And in Cleveland, it's a big, I mean, Cleveland had a, Huge win against Chicago, where man, I I that thought Chicago was a lot. Bills. It, that was, game. it was brutal, but I mean, Cleveland's been good. Joe Flacco's been serviceable. They like playing well. These guys have been the defense has still been playing solid. So, yeah, I mean, Cleveland looks good. I, I for one, Tony, think this is Cleveland all day. I, I I think they win here. I like them to cover. It's only two and a half point spread. Give me. I think they're on the road, but give me the road, uh, you know, favorites here, the Browns. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I I honestly don't even see how Houston wins. Houston got (laughs) so lucky to win that game last week. They got so freaking lucky. And part of it was just the Tennessee Sox ass. Like, they they just – I don't know how they beat – the most shocking thing of the year for me was them being 14 down to Miami and winning. Like, that – was insane and fluky on top of it. That it was, I mean, stuff like that's just somewhat lucky <laughs> and they just suck on top of it. So I yeah, I mean, it. you watch that game, you were like, man, Houston's in bad. They're going to lose by 40. Like when you watch the beginning of that game and it's just somehow they stayed around and staying around and case Keenum, like as the game went on, I think, you know, got a little more comfortable. And decent, stuff like yeah, that. I mean, that's what a veteran gets you. He's not amazing. Yeah. He probably isn't even good, but he'll at least just get you in there and give you a yeah, chance. Yeah, look at look at Case Keenum. Look at Nick Mullins. They give you a shot. You know what I give mean? Like shot. they give you a shot, and that's all you can ask for, I think, from those type of guys. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely an interesting spot. But all right, uh, we're both on Cleveland, I think, and uh, yeah, well, I like that bet too. That's probably one of my favorite bets. I'm, I'm assuming though, that's a popular bet, right? I mean, they like have to be on most, but yeah, I mean, I don't see how Houston wins. So, yeah, the only way like, Houston wins is if Cleveland just doesn't score. Which think about it though, they're going from playing the Tennessee defense to the Cleveland Browns defense, yeah. like. And they struggled scoring against Tennessee. How are they not going to struggle scoring here? Like, <laughs> it's it definitely looks like an easy spot for sure. It almost looks too easy. It almost looks too easy. That's my one worry. But the, the worry still for me is just Cleveland's offense definitely isn't great. The guy that just continues to cry and Joku number one on the flow chart again last week, thirty points again. I, I mean, the tight end position with Flacco is just crushing. Yeah, Joe Let me Flat. Fit, is. Let me look at he's fifty three hundred now, Tony. He's fifty three hundred. Oh my god, Houston's game. Houston's the second worst team to the tight end too. Well, number one, Bengals. Number two, Houston. David Njoku going back <laughs> Once, in my he's lineup. Be number one on the flow chart again this week. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to play, I'm gonna him, this play week. him. I'm tired of not playing him. He crushes yeah, every too. week. In this spot, too, I, I, I'm definitely playing him. You know the other guy who crushed, too? Devin Singletary just, like, He's been – man, we don't like him on this. He's been good, though. Like, since he started getting the majority of the work, he's been good. I mean, he literally shoved Damian Pierce to the side. Damian Pierce <laughs> yeah, got one rushing attempt, one rushing attempt last game for three yards. Devin yep. Singletary got 26, Tony. 
Uh, he's That's been crazy. good for sure. Ever since that week, I, I had Pierce's in the flow chart. Singletary's whooped his ass. Whooped his ass. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But I, I would assume that, that volume's not going away. Position. I'll say it till the end of time. Like, anybody can come in and be good if it's right. Singletary sucked in Buffalo for eight years, it felt like. Yeah, and listen, I don't think that volume's going away. If Case Keenum's going to quarterback again, they're going to run the football or try to run the football. Yep, like definitely, hundred percent. So if you like volume, I think you know it's a good spot. But it's a tough matchup for sure. Uh, Detroit, Minnesota. You got a three and a half point spread here, and uh, Detroit obviously favored in Minnesota though. And you got you know Jared Goff coming off a. Huge game. Sam Laporta's crushing. And you get Nick Mullins, who, you know, I thought he played pretty well, Tony. Like, I I know there were some bad mistakes. There were some, you know, some bad turnovers and everything like that. But, again, uh, you just – you got to give me a chance at the end of the game. And he gave me a chance. Like, that's, that's really all you can ask for. And I honestly thought the Vikings were the right side, like, the yeah. whole time. Like, I was watching it, and I'm I'm like, the Vikings are definitely the right side. And even when I bet the Bengals live, when they were down like 10 in the third quarter, I was still like, I just can't not take seven points. They were giving me seven points at plus money. It was plus 100 for seven points or something like that because Minnesota had the ball at that point. And I'm like, man, I got to take this seven points. Like, even, even if it, it, the Vikings win, I don't think they win by – that, that that amount of points i think it's a, it gets to be a close game so you know the Bengals ended up winning but you know what do you think of nick mullins first you know full game yeah i mean i he he played about exactly how i expected i mean he's a veteran he's not gonna like wow you with anything but he's gonna keep you in there and, and i think he'll do the same thing this week where I, I think there's points in this game for sure it just looks like Detroit's defense is way worse than people think. Minnesota's defense is good, but probably slightly overrated just because they blitz a bunch. And I think Goff can handle the blitz. It's an inside game where I always worry about Goff outside. It's still inside, even though it's on the road. I think we see points, and I think we see our first Justin Jefferson monster game in a, in a long time. I think he's in a really good spot. Left two weeks ago, he got hurt midway, missed most of the game. This week, he made some great catches. I think he finished with 15 or something like that, but didn't explode because Addison got it. I think this week's the week he crushes. And finally, Amon Ra had a big game last week, and, and I like this matchup a little bit. Against the Blitz, I like a guy like Amon Ra who can come across the middle. He can catch screens. He can catch outs. He can catch all those hitch patterns, all that stuff against Blitz. I, and I haven't liked Amon Ra in a while. So and, I like he, those guys. I like Ty, Ch Ty Chandler looked great last week. Yeah. I mean, we've always been a fan of him. Even in college, I liked him. He, he's a beast. Gibbs just looks dominant right now. Laporta, Hawkinson, you got dominant tight ends. Perfect weather where we're going to have bad weather always the rest of the year outside. Everything in this game points to me to just being a good scoring, high scoring game. Nick Mullins at 5,300 is very, very cheap. So I like, I mean, him and Goff to me are like the same quarterback this week. And I get him for 1,600 less. So I, I like Mullins. I like Minnesota in this game too. I think Minnesota yeah. wins for sure in this game. And what's the spread? Three? Three and a half. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a good price. I think Minnesota's going to win, so I, I like this game a lot. Yeah, I like the over, and I like Minnesota, too. I agree with you 100% on Nick Mullins, on Justin Jefferson. Uh, I'm on Rod, definitely, because like you said, all the quick stuff, right? Get the ball out of your hands, you know, and let the guy do work after the catch, and you know, that's Amon Ra, you know what I mean? If there's pressure, like, he's getting the ball. Like, he's probably going to get 12 targets or something like that here. And they do a lot of, like, those screens, too. So I could see them catching Minnesota on a blitz, just getting that ball out quick. And then there's just, you know, a screen to the house or something like that, a wide receiver screen. Um, one other guy, too, like, Jamison Williams in these type of spots, he's 3,700. But he's another dude, like, if you blitz a lot, you got to – you know, you, you don't have as much help on the back end, and he's a burner. He could absolutely catch you, you know, you know, one on one down the field. So I, I think he's another guy, like a tournament play, of course. 
um, but has upside to, to crush in this spot too. So I like him. This is a great game for fantasy. Like you said, it's one of the better spots I think you have on the slate. So, and a good total that I think goes over that total as well. So like it a lot, Minnesota, we're both on, I think you said the over too. So we're both on the over in that game. Um, let's see here. Let's go to, uh, well, why did I skip that? Washington and New York. Three point spread. Uh, the Jets. The Jets are favored. Your over New York the teams Washington. let you down last Sunday. I just want you to know that. Oh, Your they two did. New York squads. They crushed me last Sunday. I had so much money on them. They absolutely crushed my wallet yesterday. Oof. It was a tough, tough scene for my New York team, especially the Jets, though. I love the Jets at eight and a half. I had so much money on the eight and a half. Uh, Ah, oh, that, that that killed. I, I did have a good amount of money on the money line, too. But. What is that money talking about? And Joku, 90% what? What does 90% mean? Oh, 90% like owned? He's I mean, not why would Joku be 90% owned when he's never he's owned? Had two, he's had two big games in a row. He's not going to be 90% he's owned. He's never owned. Yeah. And he's 5,300. I mean, he's not going to be owned. I mean, at yeah. the absolute most, like 15%. Tight end's one of those spots too, Tony. You know it, but like people want to spend down yeah. normally, anyways. Like they want to spend up for the CD Lambs and the St. Browns and the Tyree Kills and the Justin Jets. Yeah. You know, they don't the C Max on, on certain slate. Like, they don't want to spend up a tight end naturally. So I think in the end, he comes in like 10%, maybe lower. Yeah. Somewhere in that range, you know, Thank like you. five, 10%. So. I said I'm locking him up 90% of the line. Ah, oh, yeah. I said locking him up at 90% of the line. I like so, that, okay. yeah. Jam him in I, the... didn't, I didn't see the locking him up part. My bad. My bad. He's saying it, though, like, and he's get. I'm going to put him in 90% yeah, Don't be bringing that negative juju, though. Say yeah, you're playing him 90%, and he's going to crush for us. We need positivity. Yeah. He's going to get us 25-plus is what you meant. You yeah. forgot the two. You know, before the five is the two. So we get 25, yep. not five. Is what you meant, but all right, Tony. Jets, Washington, uh, Washington, hundred percent bench Sam Howell at the end of that game last week. Hundred percent in the fourth quarter. Jacoby Brissett came in and looked unbelievably slow, but awesome compared Another to Sam other veteran. Howell. <laughs> hey, listen, the thing about these veterans are they might not be as talented as some of the young, but the the mind is the most important at quarterback. So, and it's not it it never works long term. But short term, these guys can definitely do it. Yeah, hundred percent. And why do you think? Like, wh- what did he do right when he come in the game, Tony? He just started targeting the shit out of Terry McLaurin, and he started giving him chances. And that's what happens when you give your best receiver chances is they're gonna make plays. And one thing Sam Howell doesn't do is give his best player chances. There's a yeah. reason why Terry McLaurin had never had a game like that. And if you watch the game. And you don't just look at Terry McLaurin's box scores, you're going to know that he was going to have a bad game before Jacoby Brissett came in and, and saved his fantasy game in the fourth quarter. Like his production was almost all done in the fourth quarter. With yep. Sam Howell, he, he barely had any fantasy. Like the fantasy points were very slim. So you're going to look at that six for 141 and a touchdown, but like most of that was done at the end of the game with Jacoby Brissett. Yep. So, I mean, th- this game, you got another clear, weird matchup where Washington or I mean, the Jets are by far the worst against the run. They love to shut the pass. Washington loves to pass. It- it- it's just one of those matchups that's not a good spot for Washington. They just don't match up good with the Jets, the, w- the way the matchups go. But the Jets also suck. So, that's where it gets a little tricky for me in these spots because the matchups say you should like the Jets here for sure. Like the way everything lines up, 100% the Jets are the are the play. But then you have to bet the Jets. <laughs> and that, that doesn't always work out too good. So. And, and Trevor Simeon or whoever they start yeah. at, at quarterback because I, I mean, don't think Zach Wilson's going to play. No, I don't. I for sure don't think he's going to play. So, so Simeon will probably be because they can't play the other guy either. So it's got to be Simeon, and they're still favored, right? 
They're still three point uh, yeah, favorites. I mean, here. I, I like the Jets. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to pretend that I don't I'm not doing what I'm doing, and I'm going to click Jets because the matchups say the Jets are the play. I think they match up perfect. I will give one one thing about the Jets, though. I feel like they've been playing pretty hard all year, just holding out hope that they could somehow hang around. They finally reached the point where they're done. They're, they're officially done. They are a veteran team somewhat that could just quit. I'll throw that out there. I know Holden doesn't like to sit, hear that. They're a team that I could see quitting at some point the next couple of weeks. But the matchups do look good. And Washington sucks too. So don't you feel I like, the like they were holding out like for Aaron Rodgers? Like yeah. remember the first game of the year, how hyped like pregame and everything. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. And I think all those guys even were like psyched to play with Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Like we finally got a quarterback. You know, he's going to bring us home, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then he obviously goes down real fast. And that's the end of that dream. But, like, now it's dead, right, Tony? Now it's not happening this year. Now it's dead, officially. And and they know it. And the players know it. And you're right. They were probably holding out hope Aaron was going to come back and save us. Like, I believe that some of those guys were like, let's get to 7-7, and be in the middle, and, and maybe Aaron comes back and can win us a couple games and get there. So, Definitely. yeah, I kind of agree with you. Um, I can't bet Trevor Simeon. I can't, <laughs> That's what I mean. You got to close the eyes. I can't do it. I literally I, – I've tried to. I've tried to close my eyes, I and, and when I open them, I just I, – I see Washington. Yeah. I see I see Washington. That's what I see. So I'm, I'm just going to go the other way of you and say, I'm just going to close my eyes and bet Washington yeah, you go. and pray. So uh, that, that I can't do uh, Trevor Simeon. He is so, so bad. Yeah. And Jacoby, honestly, like, what does Washington do with the quarterbacks? I don't know if I mean, they're not anything. going back to Jacoby. They can't just give up on Sam Howell. Like, well, they I'll just tell you right to. now, if Sam Howell throws out a first half like he did last week, they need to go to Jacoby. Cause... The problem is their season's over, though. Like, they're, oh. they gain nothing by – they already know what Jacoby is. I, I know. I'm just saying, Sam Howell. Even if Sam terrible. Howell's terrible, like, they just got to throw him out there. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Unless you're just totally giving up on him and you're just like, he's not our quarterback. Which We're going to draft do. someone or bring someone in. We're done with you. Then you can pull him. But don't well, pull him again unless you're done with him. In reality, though, if they pull him, they're going to go to the third string guy. <laughs> they're definitely done with him. They can't give up on him yet. He's been good enough. Like, don't give up on him yet. Give him he some time. He was so bad in that game last week. He was he bad. Was so for bad. Sure. He, he was, was worthy of being too. pulled. He was worthy of being. And I don't think when they pulled him, I think those co- the coaching staff was like, the game's over anyways. We're going to pull. It's 28 to 7 or whatever it was. Like, And then J- Jacoby just made so many, like, big plays. They were like, oh, we're back in this game already. So. Another another uh, thing with Washington though, as opposed to the Jets, like and Matty Ice brings it in there. One of my favorite people, Matty Ice. Uh, I mean, technically, Washington should want to lose at four and ten. I mean, they should not. This is the point of the season where a smart team should, again, Holden. I'm looking at you, Holden. Not deliberately <laughs> try to lose, but play some different guys, call some weaker plays. Try to lose. Who's their <laughs> third string when quarterback? You're four and ten. Who's their third string quarterback? Do we I know? I have no idea, but let me see. Anyone in chat? No, I can look it up. I'll pull but... it up. I got it right here. They don't even Cause... have a third one on the roster. They don't have a third the one. Depth chart said, "I don't know who's the practice squad." But last week, the only actives were Howell and Brissett, so I don't know who the practice squad guy is. Well, if they want to lose, they should be bringing this dude up, whoever he is, off the practice squad. Say. You get the next three games. Or Who is it, Matty Ice? I guarantee Matty Ice knows. Matty Ice team. knows. He's a Washington fan, yeah. I think. I think he's he's from that area. So, all right, Matty Ice will tell us. Let's go to uh, the Seattle, Tennessee here. Seattle coming off the big game, two and a half point favorites in Tennessee, and a forty-two total, Tony. And Tennessee, we've always said it all year. You beat them by throwing on them. That's 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 how you beat them, right? Seattle looked pretty good. I will say that pickup of Lawrence from, I think it was the Giants, that was a good pickup for Seattle. He's been really good, especially like stuff in the run and stuff. Like he's been, 
he's been awesome. I, like that play when Jalen Hurts went from the pocket left at the end of the game all the way back to the right. He, he was one of the guys like chasing them all around and like making that play happen, which was a horrible play by Jalen Hurts, by the way. But either way, he's been awesome. How do you go against Seattle in this spot? And I want them to lose for our bet, but <laughs> they're going to end up getting in now after all the after beating Philly. That win's going to propel them. I'm telling you, Pete Carroll have those right guys now. rolling. I, I might have care. to. Get, I might have to go in and hedge it. What's this odds? Like I know Geno Smith's going to be back too, right? So I would assume we give him a boost if he's if he's going to be back. A little boost. I mean, I thought Drew Locke played decent, honestly. Man, so to make the playoffs is minus 160 right now. And I think we bet it plus 340 or something when we bet it. So there's not even that much hedge room. Yeah, I'm going to have to ride it out. I was hoping we, if we, if I could have got plus, like plus anything, I would have hedged out right there and just free rolled it a little bit. But if it's minus oh, no. 160, I can't bet that. I just realized Will Levis is uh, – he didn't practice. He was one of the quarterbacks that didn't practice today. So, keep an eye on that. I mean, hopefully he plays, but I, – I actually think he might not play from the looks of it. Well, if that's the case, you're going to get Tannehill maybe? Definitely Tannehill, yeah. Yeah, not Malik Willis, right? I they, can't they imagine Tannehill. they would go to him, but I guess in an absolute emergency, <laughs> they could pop him in there, but – yeah, Chris in the chat says, I don't know if he's from the area. Hearing buzz, oh, Malik Willis man. might start. Oof. Yikes. That's bad news for our Seattle bats <laughs> if Malik's in there. Woo. I mean, if Malik is in there, two and a half, I mean, pound Seattle. I absolutely – I man. like, if he starts Seattle, Cleveland, just pound those two teams, let's get our dubs because uh, yeah. I don't know how we don't bet Seattle, Tony. Oh, I mean, you might just have to make up your bet here. Seattle's big weakness is running game, and maybe he can run a little bit. But when you know a quarterback can't throw, it, it does make a difference. <laughs> I mean, oh. you even saw it in the Philly game. The Philly team had success early running the football. They had some big gains, and it slowly started to, you know, go away where they weren't gashing them as bad through the run. Like, it, it you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Seattle here. I, I just I can't back the Titans, Tony. Officially, yeah. I mean, so Tennessee is really weak against receivers. Seattle, I consider really strong at receiver. Uh, those are good plays right there. The Seattle receivers, just like last night. Tennessee is, or I mean, Seattle is really really weak against the run. Well, Seattle's defense is pretty weak against everything. But you're not playing the quarterback. You're not playing the receivers, at least I don't think, especially with Malik Willis, you can't. So it leaves the running back, and I just keep thinking that, I mean, Ty J. Spears looks incredible to me. He played 50-50 last week, so the last three weeks he's played, basically every week he's around 50%. If you think Seattle wins, I just think he's a great play at 4,700. And one of these weeks, don't be surprised when he gets like 70% because they're they're transitioning. Henry's not going to be there next year. So they want to see Spears as much as they can. Uh, I think I think he's a great freaking play at 4,700, especially if you play like a Geno DK team or something or Geno Lockett, Geno GSN, and then come back with uh, Ty J Spears. I like him a ton this week. Yeah, and is Tennessee officially eliminated, Tony? Are they still officially? Yeah, they are. They're officially eliminated. So why wouldn't you be given? And they're another sharp team. Vrabel's sharp. Yeah. So it does make sense that they would just say, you know what? Fuck it. Let's play Malik Willis. We should bet. I love that call with Todd. I love that call with Tajay Spears. Yeah, I'm batting. I'm batting it. I love the call with Tajay Spears though, because I do think they're losing. And I like I like it. I'm gonna run it back with one of these Seattle wide receivers. I've been fading them most of the year on like main slates, but Jackson Smith and Jigba is still 4,500. He's so freaking talented. Like, like God, Tyler funny. Lockett's 5,600, which is all. I feel like I think he's JSN slowly cre creeping by him. Like I think he's slowly turning into that number two guy. And and at some point he's gonna have a 20 plus point game. Like at some yeah. point. That dude's going to explode. Week. This could be the week. 
I think for me, I'm going to go either him or DK. Like I, I we got, but we got to pound this right now. We got to pound Seattle. Like two and a half, we got to just get in there and just you all the way moves? up in the crevice. Just who? Do you th- <laughs> do you think that moves by Sunday? Uh, if they pull Malik Willis in there officially, like it has to move. Yeah, at least a three and a half. I mean, that's a big point. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. And they're not going to try. Vabral and, and Tennessee are sharp. They are not going to go out there and play their ass off when they can get a better draft pick. Yeah. They're, they are 100%. sharp. And he knows by playing Malik Willis, they're probably not going to win the football game. So, I mean, I, I got to pound that. That That's why Willis could be in. We're not saying he's definitely in. The more I think saying, about it, the more I think it's going to be him, though. It makes too yeah, much sense. It makes sense is what we're and saying. And that's why we got to bet it right now before they could announce that at any point. We got to bet it right now. Lock it in. All I right. think Matty actually liked that all the way up in the crevice. And yeah. uh, Wait, what was he doing? Brian says, does the, Ooh, right up in yeah, there. Yeah, up in there. Does the flow chart love Spears? So I haven't done the full flow chart, but I do got the numbers. Seattle. Number eight against running backs in the bad way. And, and Tennessee, number six running backs. So, yes, it'll be a great flow chart spot. And an even greater flow chart spot if you think Seattle wins. Chris is throwing out these nuggets. Yeah, Tannehill I mean, almost quit on the team. Asked for Tannehill like, shouldn't even be on the roster still, honestly. He's yeah. not an NFL quarterback. He hates Tennessee. He quit on them. Like, just get rid of them. Yeah, just be done with them. I, I yeah, this makes so much sense to play Malik Willis if Levis is out. You're right. Um, all right, let's go to the three late games. I think we got through all the early games. So three late games. Uh Jacksonville and Tampa Bay. Oh, Tampa Bay. Just absolutely destroyed my Packers. And uh C- Tony Chris Godwin finally popped off, had a big game, finally. Uh, but one and a half point spread against Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence is questionable. And I think very questionable with that concussion. So what are we doing with this game? Yeah, it's an interesting spot for sure, because I, I, the only thing about Trevor Lawrence, which we've talked about a few times, the bastard always ends up playing, but is I he do He-Man? Think like he seriously, is he He-Man time. or something? What? Is he He-Man? Like, like he's invincible uh, he with these never injuries. Misses, like, but- the bad part for him is I think he's missing this week. <laughs> I'll be stunned if he's in there. The good part, though, you might not like this, but my boy beat hard, baby. 5,100 against this Tampa Bay pass defense. It's the best spot. I freaking love this. How is he I not love... 4K? Come on. Yeah, if he was 4K, I would need new undies. Like I would. If You'd he be was right 4K, up in I that would... crevice. You'd be up. I would, how do you do it again? I, don't I would know how probably you lock him if he was 4K. Yeah. If, like you lost her, if you loved Case Keenum last week, then you were definitely loving oh, Beat Hart. I was would 4K be this full week. blown Wood if, if he was 4K. But 5,100, I can still play him at a normal rate, 15% or something, play him on some of my teams because the matchup's still great. He's still got good receiving options, he's got a good pass catching running back. He's got he's got everything he needs in this matchup. The spread tells you they can still win this game. Honestly, it could be a, it's not a gift to us in best ball because we need we need Trevor. But in DFS, I think it might be a gift to us. No one's going to play beat hard, and the matchup is just as good. Like it is a great matchup against Tampa Bay, and he has weapons like Ridley sixty three, Ingram fifty four, Parker Washington's look good thirty eight hundred. I mean, even Agnew can catch a bomb. We saw 3,400. So I, I think yeah. these are great plays. And another low-key thing with the flow chart, Jacksonville's freaking defense has been so bad, so, so, so bad lately that Tampa's in play. This game, I haven't – again, I haven't finished the flow chart. I have a feeling this game might be, like, one of the best games of the week as far as my overall – Structure. I think this game could shoot out big time. I don't love either D. I love both offenses. I love Mike Evans, who scored again. Mike Evans will nuke this week. I, I love Mike Evans. So, I, I mean, I think Zay Jones is out for sure, too, Al Money. Like, he, he, he caught it pretty good. But 
that is what it is. I think this is a great spot all the way around. I think it's a great stack spot. I even like Rashad White a ton again. He always comes through for me. I, I like him. Think about this, Tony. We've loved two stacks on this slate. Jacksonville, Tampa Bay with Beat Hart and Baker Mayfield and Nick Mullins <laughs> and, and uh, Jared Goff. Minnesota. I mean, it... <laughs> like, I, if I was just doing a quick, like, you know, from the show, I would just say. Oh, so Layla says, uh, Big T called out, the su- they suck. Outs to a Colts fan. We don't have our starting. So there's a difference between me thinking they suck. I think they've overachieved. So you should be proud as a Colts fan. I I'm don't think they've had a ton of talent and they're seven and seven or whatever they are, eight and six. But whatever they are, they're right in the mix. I, you should be happy as a Colts fan. And your quarterback, he'll be back next year. He'll probably get hurt again, as JSU will say. But mm-hmm. you get him back, and who knows? Uh, you should be happy. I will say this, too, is you left out the first part where she said, I love you, Big T. Had to start the video over from the beginning, and then she got into the Colts thing. But she first said, I love you. I mean, that's that's like that's like semi-hate. But in the nicest way possible, like that, that Layla Those can are, write that's it. Why I, I mean, out. yeah, that's that. Uh, hopefully, one day someone can hate on me like Big T gets hate. I, I like that type of hate. That's I get that's plenty of nice bad hate. Too. You always act like I don't get any hate. I get plenty. No, of I know hate. you do. I would never <laughs> want to open up your Twitter. If I yeah. if we ever traded Twitter for like a week, I'd literally want to like stab myself in the leg. Like the flow chart. Not- some of the flow chart ones are the funniest because they'll be like. How could you say to play like whoever? And I'm like, it's the flow chart. I didn't say you like, you still got to have some sense to it. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, Wiley's getting some cotton. Prez isn't on this show today. The Prez has a lot of, he's very busy. He's, you know, he's got meetings. He's got business things he's got to attend to for Rum Pure and, and for all the other stuff he does. Prez is a busy guy. You know, it, it takes us a lot, Tony, to get him on the shows. The couple times we do get them on the shows, like it's it's tough. He's a busy man. Yep. All right, uh, Vince. I, I love too how Tony you changed Beat Hart's name so bad that like some people thought his name was actually Beat Hart, and yeah. then they realized his it name was is pronounced Beathard. it was pronounced Bethard. So like <laughs> the, the guys coming in and they're like, "It's Beat Hart. It's Beat." No, it's, it's CJ Bethard. Oh, they no. were like being serious, acting like it was Beat Hart. Yeah, I his name Vincent, is Beat Hart. I agree with them. I, I think Vincent was saying that too. I, I think that's what he meant. When it's he was so much saying. better of a name anyway than Bethard or whatever. <laughs> no, way better. Beat <laughs> Hart's pre- way better. You can't correct me, Vincent. Come on, it's Beat Hart. <laughs> Do I need to go get Always my jersey? I might have my jersey on on Sunday again. Look at this. Some more love. Big T's elite Twitter game. My fave is the Taysom Jim gift. <laughs> Some people no, think that's fake. Bro, when that you, is real, whoever's watching that. That is not edited. When you posted the Drew Locke picture with the chick. That was, yeah, and that the, was the, 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 I mean, I texted you. I was like, this is one of your better ones yet. I, I mean, didn't even post- say anything either. I just posted Woo! the picture. You, yeah, that was great. I love that. So one. many Philly one. fans one too favorite. were like, they responded like, I, that, at that point, I knew we were in trouble when I saw the picture. Yeah, yeah, they were they were probably so tilted too when they saw that picture. It's, it's so so good though, absolutely elite. Uh, if you want to follow Big T and you're not following him at Big T44 on Twitter, he'll give you a little comedy relief every now and then Try. if you're looking for a little comedy, and then uh, he'll shit talk some people every now and then. You know, a little both. Got to got to mix it up. Um, yeah, I, I love this game though. We're we're on board. Let's go to the next one: Arizona and Chicago. Tony, do does Chicago do it for us? Because we need them. They they need to step. They need to step. Step up, Chicago. Step up, baby. We need you. I mean, you'll get me out of my chair. I'll jump out of my chair next show if they give us a massive game. Because we need Justin Fields and DJ Moore and Cole Komet. We need you all to nuke. I won't be mad at you if you don't. I'm not one of those crazy people on Twitter that yell at professionals because they screwed them in a bet. Or uh, did you see the guy who yelled at Alex Caruso for screwing up a bet? That wasn't actually Alex Caruso, though. Oh, was it? I thought it was like a picks guy. Oh, I don't know, mate. Was it? A it does, that part doesn't even matter, anyways. It was the <laughs> too many Disney Alex guy. Carusos. Too many people yeah. look like Alex Caruso. I, I like there's way too many of them, but it, that part doesn't matter anyways. The, the idiot said yeah. they were going to kill him. 
<laughs> yeah, the idiot said he's gonna kill. Like, if you're doing that shit, you shouldn't be on Twitter. You can't yeah. handle Twitter. You can't handle betting. Don't bet. That's why I wasn't Don't play the DM. player, Alex Caruso, because he was pissed about a bet that that Alex Caruso gave out yeah. and it lost or something. You're the one that bet, buddy. We yeah. do this you, every day. Listen, you to hit us it. You want. You click the buttons for the players, the bets, the – don't blame anyone else. I don't blame – well, sometimes I blame JSU as a joke, but I yeah. never actually blame anyone for the people I play. Correct. And if Tony gives me – Tony gives me a bet and I put it in, if it loses, I'm never like, you fucked me, Tony. And nothing God tilts damn me it. more than that for the record. And I'm not saying yeah. JSU does it because he doesn't. But I never I give do a bet it. to someone and they're like, oh – Big T gave me that lose like that is annoying. That's a good way to not get any more bets. Yeah, that's a good way to never get a bet again. Yeah. Yeah, like absolutely never. And then get you a never bet get like credit that. when you win either. I have so many buddies yeah. like that. You'll you'll give a bunch of winners, never hear a word. Last week with Pantoja, I gave it out to a bunch of people, just nothing back. And then the the the, the first loser, they can't wait to tell you. It's like, dude, what about the winners? I I, I gave up. I told P- Pantoja was a lot like I, I told people Pantoja was a lot and I don't care if he got a little tired he steamrolled that dude for three and a half four rounds oh, like absolutely steamrolled them if you can't stop getting taken down that's your fault you got to fix it yeah that was that was an easy winner right there so <laughs> but oh I only see the positive <laughs> oh but oh you're the best but oh said I'm okay he said he said JSU you're okay I, I took that as a pretty big That's compliment. A compliment. Coming That's from strong from Butho. Yeah, yeah, coming from Butho. I mean, me and Butho, people don't we used to, you know, butt heads a lot. I mean, there was there was some tension there early, uh, you know, back a year or two ago. Now, now it's now it's a little more love. Maybe not love. Love's too strong of a word, but you know, a little likeness, you know, something like that. But all right, uh, <clears throat> what do you like here for this matchup, Tony? I mean, Arizona, Marquise Brown's hurt. Uh, I you know Darnell Mooney's questionable. Not really seeing much. He should else be freaking questionable. Must be drop that damn hail mary. Yeah, screw you, Darnell. No, I'm kidding. I mean that was, should have been caught. That was that was bullshit. I again, that's a last minute thing, and you don't expect the ball to fall Definitely on your not. lap. But when and, you're laying so, there and it falls in, you got to catch it. Like you just, I know. Catch it. I'm just saying though, like that's so like the awareness when you fall on your back, you're not expecting that ball to just drop in your lap. Like that was probably the last. You would have caught it. I mean, I don't know if I would have. You would have caught know, it. I, I believe in you. You'd have caught it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate that. This game, though, I mean, the good thing for us, we got the Bears versus Arizona. Arizona has to be one of the worst teams. The only issue at all for me, and again, I I hate to be redundant, but I like to live on the flow chart because it's treated me well this year, especially with bets. With bets, it's treated me great in the NFL. Arizona is way worse against running back than anything else. And Chicago isn't great at running back, to say the least. But it's still Arizona. We can still beat them through through the pass. And Chicago is one of the worst teams against tight end. And besides Njoku, friggin' McBride has been incredible. He got carted off last week and still played. I mean, what percent of snaps? He still played 72% of snaps. He got carted off the field and still played 72% of snaps. That's incredible. And he crushed again. So, for me, it's an easy spot. I mean, first of all, I like Chicago a lot. You talked about it last week. Since the trade, they've been incredible. They lost last week, but they played a good Cleveland defense. They were there again. They've been in so many games. They barely lost to Detroit. They barely lost to Cleveland. They Probably two more games I'm not even thinking of they could have won. I mean, they're much closer to being good than bad. And they're not losing to Arizona. I, I firmly think they have a great game this week. I love Fields. I love DJ Moore. Uh, at running back. So at running back, I know Foreman was banged up. Uh, I want to pay attention to running back because if Foreman, he's not even questionable on my thing. I don't know. He's not, which sucks because I wish one of these guys was out because I could definitely play Foreman or Herbert at 47 and 4,600. But the problem is they just freaking, what were their snap counts? I thought uh, 26 for Foreman and 23 for Herbert and 49 for Roshan Johnson. That's just probably because they were losing most of it. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. It sucks that they play so many guys. You really can't go there, but it's such a good yeah. spot. Uh, man, even Foreman just for best ball, maybe score a couple times or something for us. But I don't know. I like Chicago. I, I think it's a pretty good spot, pretty clear spot. And I love I love them in the bet, bets wise. This is more of a bet show, anyways. I, I love the Bears bet bet wise. Trey McBride has been unbelievable. He's so, so good. I wish we could go back to the film of the print factory from like week three when I brought him up and then all the chat was making fun of me. Like I said, he was the, he was a beast tight end at Colorado state. I said, and the chat was like, who he was even my punt guy that one week at 25. At that point too, he was playing behind Zach Ertz, right? At yeah. He point. was still playing behind, yeah. but he was 2,500. Just think about the yeah. leap from that point to now. Yeah, I mean, he looks unbelievable. And he, he, to your point, he never comes off the field. Yeah. Like, you have to cart the man off to get him off the field. <laughs> and then he comes he back. back after that. And, he was even, like, t- playing with his Achilles, too. And on top of it, he's not even questionable for this week. They don't yeah. even have, How is he not on the injury report or anything? Like, I don't see him on the injury report. So, and it's just wild. Uh, Bears were up or tied until the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was. That game was that game was wild. I I thought the Bears had it, um, but yeah, I, this is Bears all the way. My only issue with the stack, Tony, that I worry about is can Arizona keep pace? That's the only thing I worry about here. Yeah, I don't I don't love the matchup as much as I should either. Just because I said like I like to attack teams where, where their strengths are. Arizona's clear weakness is run game, and the Bears don't like to run it all that much. So like I don't feel like it's as good as it seems. Because you just look at it, you think it's a great spot. I thought it was a great spot, so I started digging in more. Once I actually dig in, though, I don't think it's as good as it should be. I wonder, too, do you think CMC's numbers over those two games skewed Arizona's numbers a little bit? It's only week to week, so it can't. Okay. That's why I like doing it the way I oh, that's do good. it. That's good. Even go. the 50 doesn't skew it because I just rank it, so – Okay. It's it just don't give me. It's two weeks where they're the worst team against the run, but right. it, won't, it won't get it out of skew. Okay. I mean, well, that's so good enough. Like, watch me pull up the so defensive running back. They've had three. They're basically Philly receivers defense. That's how dominant the running is against them. I mean, they've had nine weeks this year with top ten running backs against them. Yeah, uh, the problem is you just can't pick between those running yeah. backs. If you if you have a feel though, like if you have a lean on which just one sucks the guy there's is, three like, of them. Yeah, I don't think you can do it. But all right, let's go to I think one of the better actual games on the slate: uh, Dallas in Miami, fifty-one and a half total. So I think the biggest total on the board for this slate. Um, it's a one and a half point spread, and uh, Dallas is the dog here in Miami. Miami's favored. Uh, Tony, what do you think of the Cowboys here against Miami coming off the absolute beatdown of the Bills? This smells like Dallas all the way to me. Yeah, I think it smells like points to me all the way where you see a shootout because I think Miami will score too, assuming Tyreek's in, which uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to play. I think, they re- I think they rested him last week yeah. for this game specifically. 100%. I agree. I mean, they played I just, Dallas, the Bills, and, and the Ravens, right? The last three games? Yeah. They totally took that game as like a rest game like uh, yeah. against it. Like, hey, we need I, you I for agree. these three games. And I just don't see any resistance. The only catch up at all is, is this Miami defense real? Because the last four weeks, they have been so good on defense, like so good on D. But I, I think it's more fluky. I think it's some of the teams they were playing. I mean, Last played... four weeks, Jets, Washington, Tennessee, Jets. Exactly. So <laughs> you play in the Jets the one week had the other quarterback too, whatever that guy And before did that, was. the Raiders, if you want to take in five weeks. I yeah. Mean, come on, I mean, like... So I think it's fluky. I mean, there's no way. So a lot of times in the afternoon you get these games where, like, everyone wants to play it. This is a game where I don't see any way you're not just getting a bunch of points. I mean, you got Tyreek and CD. Well, I mean, if the whole line is out, that's an issue. But we'll have to wait and see on that. But I think they had one go down last week too, right? And then one guy go down last week for Miami. Very for Miami year. and San Francisco are the two best running teams in football by a mile. So if they got guys out, it definitely is a big impact, especially against Dallas's D-line. I think this is – 
I think this smells like a Dallas. I think they win by double digits. Oh, I think I like now you're getting me stiff. I think Cowboys, I think dude. Dallas comes back. Listen, Buffalo, you got to remember too. Buffalo whooped Miami's ass the first time they played. Buffalo's Buffalo legit. might just be the be our heroes. They might just be the best team in football. <laughs> Buffalo is a hundred percent legit. It's crazy to me that they might be the best team in the AFC. Hundred percent to me and. They might not make the playoff. Like, they, they, there's a chance they don't like, make the playoff. If they all started with no wins today, they are the best team in the AFC is the funny 100%. part. <laughs> 100%. It's not even close. So, so, like, to me, though, that after getting killed by – listen, you go to Buffalo, the weather was awful, right, Tony? Like, it was not an environment where Dak is going to – Josh Allen's used to playing in that shit. Yeah. He's used to playing in terrible weather. And Dak's used to playing in that, that beautiful stadium – you know, and it's just. It's I know different. people don't agree with me either, but I still think his his road numbers are a little fluky. I know I don't expect people to believe me. I, I don't I even know if it's now. the road. I think it was the environment that really fucked them up. Like, yeah, and, and going to San Fran is what it is too. They're a freaking real football team. You can get embarrassed in San Francisco. Absolutely, so, and that's what happened. They got this embarrassed. Is, I agree with you. This, this is the bounce like, back. If they, if they get like carved this week and Dak sucks, then I think you got big time concerns, but. I think they score. I mean, there's no way these teams aren't. Miami's going to score, too, though, against Dallas. Unless the line's out or something. They're going to score, but I just don't think they're going to keep up. I don't think the defense is going to be able to slow Dak down like they've been able to slow down these other teams with bad quarterbacks and not so great weapons, like not as many good weapons as Dallas. Um, But what are we going? We just watched what Buffalo did to Dallas on the ground. Is maybe our boy I change the maybe he's our fifty piece in the best ball. Maybe, maybe he's and, similar and to you, James Cook. And you know Mike McDaniel's is watching the film from that last yeah. game, and he's breaking down exactly what Buffalo did, and, and and trying to find ways to get his guys in position. I mean, maybe that is it. It's I, I hope it's our change. He's expensive I, too, so no one's gonna play him. I just struggle with like. You got Dallas, who's coming off that loss. You, They have a good pass rush. They're going to get to Tua. They're going to make him happy feet a little bit at some points. And if that whole line is beaten up just a little bit, that's got – like, he's going to get his bell – like, he's going to get his – I think this is a terrible matchup for, like, Tua. Terrible spot. Yeah. It is funny that I'm more on Miami than, than you. Usually I'm always the Dallas blowhard. I, yeah, I like he, Dallas, too. Normally I'm on Miami in this spot too, but this is this is, to me just feels like a Dallas. I think it's a bigger line. game for Miami too. Is the weird part, even though Dallas just lost and Miami won thirty to nothing. Dallas really can't improve in the NFC. I mean, see, I disagree. I think this is a huge game for Dallas because of what they just came off of getting embarrassed like that yeah. in Buffalo. I. I think this is a huge game for them, like as a team. Like you, Miami's you playing for the one world. seed, though. If Miami wins out, they get the I one know. seed. I know. I'm just telling you right Either now. Either way, it's a big bears. game. I mean, there, there's a lot at stake for both teams. Yeah. I, we'll see. Uh, it's interesting, though. All right, so you lean Miami here. You, you No, I'm Miami. not even saying that yet. I, I don't want that to be my take. I, I'm leaning over. I'll, I'll, I'll say over for now. On okay. Sunday, I'll have a pick by Sunday. I want right, to make sure Tyreek's in. I want to make sure the linemen aren't dead. Because if the linemen are out or Tyreek's out, then I like Dallas for sure. Yeah, if Miami I mean, is totally healthy going into that game or somewhat healthy, I will like Miami more than likely. Yeah, I mean, they weren't totally healthy last week either, just to be be clear. So, like, it, oh, either yeah, way. They, they can play the Jets, though. Yeah, that's true. They they can play the Jets. So. <laughs> they, can, uh, they can handle the Jets. We'll, I don't know. It's going to be a good football game, though. I'm I'm excited about that game. Yeah, I agree. I I think it's a good football game. I think we do see points, so should be awesome. All right, Tony. Those are all the games. Uh, I, I mean, there's so I many other they, games. We could just not talk fantasy, but we can just go game by game and just see if we like anything. Just because there's like literally like seven other games this week that we could pick from. Well, the thing though is, we're going to have shows on Saturday. We're going to have shows oh, yeah, obviously this Thursday. Tell them to watch. We're going to have shows Monday. I mean, if you see a game that you love, you no, want to talk about the San Fran game? Let me look at this. Let's, I'll, I'll look real quick. So you got the Raiders Chiefs on uh, Monday. You got the Giants Eagles on Monday. And the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers on Monday. 
Those are the three Monday games. Yeah, I mean, those big spreads. I mean, Chiefs minus 10, Eagles minus yeah. 12. We already talked about the Niners. I mean, those I don't even need to. The Broncos, six and a half. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, and then Saturday, we talked about those a little bit already, too. So, yeah, I mean, there's not all that much. The good thing is a lot of the bad games are on those other slates. Yeah, it does It does feel like those other slates are just so many bad games. But Yeah, all the, like, big spreads, too. Yeah, I mean, Buffalo's, what, 12 and a half? Against the Chargers or something like that in L.A.? No way they don't roll. They're going to put up 40, right? Like easy? (laughs) You certainly think. Yeah, I mean, not that that's a hot take or anything like that. But all right, guys, make sure you hit the like button on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And uh, (laughs) Giblets44 is still the promo code. If you want to become a member at Rump Your Sports, get in the Discord. Use the code Giblets44. Get your 44% off your first monthly or weekly payment. And uh, come hang out with us. Come talk some ball, football, NBA. Me and Tony got an NBA show in about an hour. Uh, the Hardwood Show is going live, I think, right now, if they're not already live. So you know, if you're playing NBA today, you can go check them out. And we'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern for some hoop stock. Tony, final words before we get out of here. No, I'm excited. I mean, content-wise, it's a little tougher these weeks. We got tons of stuff every day. But I'm excited for the holiday. I always love the action, hanging out with family playing cards, watching the games. I love that stuff. So it's going to be a fun weekend. You know, Tony, last time I played cards and, you know, I was with you, you, you didn't uh, partake. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't partake in the cards. You didn't want the, I was more of the, the organizer with that stuff. I like to make sure everyone was kind of in their area. I was trying to do my part. That's true. My area is not poker though. And, and, and I was in the poker game. Yeah, that's no, your area is to have fun. You're on vacation. Oh. You're in you're in town. That's your job. My job is to make sure everyone has fun. But but I, like I if wanted in to Boston, see... I would have been right in that card game. You're asking. Well, I hosting. wanted to see Big T in the card game. I heard I heard you got the you know the goods for the card I game. Guarantee right? I'd whoop Snyder's ass. Wow. I whooped a bunch of people's asses at that yeah, table. You did. And you I'm not a good no, poker pointed, player. Like... Oh, I, I pointed right at him too. Like every single time I won, like I won a hand and I was like. Just yeah, own your you, ass. you let them know. Absolutely. All oh, right. You got to let them know. Absolutely. Anytime you win in anything, people, you got to let the other person know. Or it's just not, you're not having enough fun with it. That's that's the yep. point. And Rubio, I'm going to whoop your ass next time I see you, whether it be in basketball or whatever you want to do. Wrestling. I'm going to whoop, I'm going to whoop his ass. Tony, he was talking so much shit. He was saying, i you going to saying he's going to beat me in hoops. Like, how are you going to stop me? I'm going to shoot right over you. I'm like, Rubio, you're not that much bigger. All I than know you. is I beat Rubio twenty one nothing. Yeah, at least, but you're big. Like you're big. I, said, I didn't Rubio, go inside on him. I said Rubio though. You and Mangone had a war. I said after four minutes, Mangone was ready to fall over playing me. Literally fall over and have a heart attack. What, what is he Rubio? He was definitely do? ready to kill over. Why he does was, everyone <laughs> always want us to fight? They always want the MMA fight. <laughs> I will never fight Big T. I will fight with Big T if someone ever uh, fought Big T. I can't see myself ever getting in another fight, for the record. <laughs> it will take an extreme situation for me someone to fight that, anybody. Yeah, like a crazy thing. Like someone breaks <laughs> in your home or something like that. Like someone breaks in my home, I'm hitting them with my gun. I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah, well, <laughs> It's not going mean, to be a fist fight. It's I mean, violent be a, a engagement. Shot, a shot fight. I, I mean, like a violent like interaction like you yeah know, like if i went in the backyard or something and someone was like whatever beating up my kid or something then i would yeah. go out and handle it but that that would be an extreme situation yeah not, not, like, I'm not just fighting situations. because someone's mean to me anymore <laughs> it's That's not right. happening and by the way i'm the only one that can be mean to, to tony all right Everyone's no one else allowed, allowed to be mean in a pl- in a fun way in a fun way that's right that's right. That's true. So, all right, guys, enjoyed the show. Uh, Tony, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you guys hopefully at 6 p.m. for the uh, NBA Up the Lock show for Big T. I'm JSU. We'll catch you guys later.